Hello everybody, my name is Trickster Shadow. I'm a variety killer main with over 7.5 thousand hours in the game. And variety meaning that I just, I play through everybody. I play through, play through all the killers pretty equally. I do a lot of killer requests on my stream, play through a bunch of different builds. And so pretty much every perk that exists in Dead by Daylight, I have at least played with a few hundred times uh, just because I stream every day, I do build requests every day. And so I've experienced pretty much all the perks in DBD in many different situations. And one of the questions I get asked a lot is how I would buff certain perks that are in the game, how I'd change certain perks to be better. And I thought I would make a video talking about how I would change all the perks in Dead by Daylight. And so that's what we're going to be doing today. It's just this video is just me sitting here talking and going through all of the changes that I would like. If you want to actually look through this on your own, there's going to be a Google Doc linked in the description because it's just a Google Doc. And you can look through and see all of them. But if you want to see my explanation for the ones that I want to change or like how I change it, if you want me just to explain it to you, then that's what this video will be. All right. So a lot of these changes I came up with either in my spare time or on my stream. Some of the changes, uh, some of my viewers influenced. Uh, I believe I credited some people with putting like their name in the description. And some of the, the suggestions that people gave on my stream are pretty good. If you haven't checked out my stream, my stream twitch.tv slash trickster shadow. I uh, try to do DBD quite a bit. And if you ever have any questions about any of the changes that I uh, kind of levying, you can always ask me there. Or in the comments down below. So the first perk that I want to change. So a lot of the changes that I want to make to killer perks, I want them to make them stronger even in the slightest. Uh, just because it's kind of boring having the same perks used all the time. And I've done this as well with the survivor perks, but that'll be another video, of course. And so this is an effort to make all the perks at least somewhat more viable and somewhat more like attracted to run on their own. And so let's just go down the list. The first perk, we got Nurse's Calling. So Nurse's Calling, of course, when anybody is healing within 28 meters of you, then their aura is shown. I want them to just up it by four meters. They could up it more, but 28 meters is still quite a bit. Uh, I just want them to up it a little bit just to make it more attractive of a perk. And I think that would be enough because Nurse's Calling does a pretty good job anyways. It, it does its job pretty well, in my opinion. Agitation. Agitation is used by a lot of killers that can down pretty fast. I see a lot of nurses and billies and blights use it just because they can down super fast and it allows them to have less downtime between hooking so they can keep up more pressure, which is a very good reason to run it. What I want them to do, though, is I want them to make it to where the base speed is the same. It's 18%. But I want them to make it to where there's an additional 6% bonus to the speed. And so if there's one survivor in your terror radius, then it's 24% because it adds on 6 to the 18. And you go 6% faster. Or you go 24% faster if there's one person. Then, of course, it keeps on stacking the more people there are. Making it to where if people are trying to body block, then you just you zoom really fast. And it also synergizes well because it increases your terror radius by 12 meters. And so it makes sense why it increases your terror radius because you want to have more people in your terror radius to go faster. And so I think this would make it a really scary perk and make it really, really interesting. And I don't know. I just, I just would like to see it. I, I think that this would make the perk a lot more interesting and make the terror radius thing make a lot more sense. Uh, we got Bamboozle. Now, Bamboozle... This is a change that I kind of want to all entity blocking perks. I think entity blocking is kind of boring, personally. I think it takes a lot out of the game, and it makes it to where the killer one doesn't learn how to run loops effectively, and they end up playing worse because they don't run loops effectively, and they end up losing more matches. And two, I think that it's kind of boring on Survivor because you pretty much if somebody bamboozles something, and you just go to the next loop. And I think that's a bit boring, and it takes a lot of the, the looping fun out of the game because the... The reason why everybody plays the game is for looping. Nobody plays the game to just do gens. Nobody plays the game just to get people on hooks. They play the game for the looping aspect. And some people may play for stealth, but even then, when you play for stealth, you still have to loop. And so it always go back, goes back to that. So what I want them to do with Bamboozle, if you don't know what Bamboozle does, when you vault a window, you go 15% faster, and then it blocks the window for 16 seconds. What I want them to do is I want them to make it to where it's 10% faster per tier, so it's 25% at level 3. And the reason why I want them to do that is because I want them to buff the effect duration by 30 seconds uh, or up to 30 seconds. And the reason why I want them to do that is I want them to replace the blocked status effect with the damage status effect on Windows where it no longer prevents people from being able to vault it and instead puts people in the min state. And so if you say so you go up 
you're chasing somebody and you go up to loop and you vault the window, you can vault it really fast, and then you make it away. If that person wants to loop that area, then they're going to have to be injured, making it to where the chase will be shorter because if somebody decides that they want to loop it still, then you're taking away a health state, or if they try to run away, then you may be able to get a hit. But it still leaves the survivor to have some have some looping potential, and even if even with this being kind of like a risky thing to do, like vaulting the window that's damaged and getting mended, it still provides the survivor uh, an ability to loop and then be, be able to um, still play the game while still having a strong perk. And so I think this would be a lot more interesting, and I have this for pretty much all the entity blocking. I think this would make the gameplay a lot more dynamic. Barbecue and chili, I feel like barbecue and chili is fine. I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory. You hook people and you get more blood points and you see auras if they're 40 meters away. I, I feel like it's a fine perk. It, it does well uh beast of prey beast of prey if you don't know what it is if you're in chase for long enough uh when you hit blood of swan you become undetectable and then you get more blood points to the hunter category when you're playing the game so what i want them to do is the hunter category I'm sure they can keep that as is whatever although it would be good if it applied it post game instead of just like during the game because maxing out in a category is pretty easy as killer so i'd rather than buff the blood point gain after the game kind of like how party streamers buff it after the game instead of during but what I want them to do to be of Prey in terms of gameplay, I want them to make it to where it when you break a pallet, it now resets your bloodlust to bloodlust 1 instead of 0, and that chases in twice as fast. And so the idea with this is if people are just dropping pallets all the time, then you're able to catch up really fast because you go up to bloodlust 1 every time you break a pallet. Make it to where you can possibly... This basically be like plant food on steroids. Basically be able to catch up to people really, really fast uh, if they just constantly waste things. And so I think this would make the perk really deadly, and it'd be really interesting to see how it would work. And then I got Bitter Murmur. What I want them to do with Bitter Murmur, if you don't know what Bitter Murmur does, whenever a gen completes, anybody within 16 meters of that gen that completed is revealed for 5 seconds, and then when the last gen is completed, everybody's revealed for 10 seconds across the map. And so what I want them to do is leave the 10 seconds across the map at the end of the game, but I want them to make it to where when a generator is completed, anybody in the entire map that is with eight, within 8 meters of a gen, their aura is shown. And obviously, like they're notified that their aura is shown. And the reason why I want that to happen is I want there to be more tracking perks that are as strong as barbecue and chili, but have like different effects that are like slight variations on like barbecue and chili. And so with this, if a gen completes, then you'd be able to see the entire team, which would be very, very strong. You'd be able to plan your next move and you'd be able to decide like how you'd bet, how like you would best pressure the survivors. Cause if you see like, Oh, there's three people in that corner of the map uh, on separate gens, then you can go through that area and push people towards uh, each other and be able to pressure them more effectively. And so I think that would make the perk a lot better, make it a lot more viable and, a lot more people would run it if you could just see everybody on the map if they're close enough to a generator. And obviously, people would be by generators a lot of the time because, like, what else are you going to do? Hide in the corner? I mean, my so some of my solo queue teammates, yeah, they hide in corners. Blood Echo. Blood Echo, every time that you hook somebody, anybody else that is injured in the match gets the hemorrhage and exhausted status effect for 45 seconds and has a 60 second cooldown. I think it's fine. Blood Echo is actually pretty intense to play against if you are playing against a Legion or a Plague or killers that or a killer with Sloppy Butcher, killers that like can injure you quite a lot. I've seen Wraith run it and they do really well with it. Uh, it's very, very strong, very, very underrated. And I'm surprised more people don't run it just because of how effective it is. So I think it's a fine perk. It just people need to realize how strong it is. Uh, Blood Warden. Blood Warden. What I want them to do to this perk. So, one of my main problems with Blood Warden is that it's so easy to counter. Pretty much 99ing exit gates is the meta because everybody just doesn't want to deal with Blood Warden. And so they'll do the exit gate until it's 99% so that they can just tap, like one tap it and then it'll open up and they can escape. So, what I want them to do to make it more interesting of a perk, more deadly of a perk, is reduce the timer to 30 seconds instead of 60. And then now Blood Warden applies to the doors. If a survivor has been hooked when all the gens are done and so what that means is that blood warden will not automatically activate once the door is open so it when it act or when the blood warden is applied to the doors if the uh, if somebody is hooked that doesn't mean like if the door is not opened then like it'll apply it means as soon as they open the door 
and then the 30 seconds will start on that door individually because I wanted to apply it individually to each door. And so if somebody 99s a door and they open it, then Blood Warden will block it for 30 seconds and making it where if people try to 99 it, they can't 99 it as effectively. And 30 seconds is enough time to be able to down even like two people and be able to get both of them on hook. And so you would still get a couple hooks out of that, especially if people are being greedy and trying to like 99 the gates. And if they don't 99 the gates, if they open up the gates, then it'll be the end game timer that'll be pressuring them. And you'll still get a lot of value out of Blood Warden because you can still push people into the gate and be able to stop them. And because it'll apply individually, if somebody goes to a different gate and opens up a different gate because you're pressuring one and, you, and then you follow them to the other one, then it'll Blood Warden and they'll be they'll be screwed and they won't be able to, to get through it. And so I think this will make it a lot more deadly and a lot... It'd make it pretty fair as well. 30 seconds isn't a super long time. They may have to adjust the time depending on testing. Of course, all this would have to be play tested. But I think this would make it a lot more interesting if it applied when the door opened instead of having to apply after the survivors opened the exit gate. And then Bloodhound. Bloodhound, if you don't know what it does, it makes it to where the blood is more bright. And then it makes it to where it lasts for four seconds longer. I want them to keep the, the bright red blood and keep the four seconds longer, but add an additional effect to where you can see blood through walls for up to 16 meters. I think that would make it a lot more interesting. It would help out a lot of people with tracking because some people suffer a lot from tracking and scratch marks are a little bit unreliable for some people. And so this would make it to where they can find people and they can follow people a lot easier, and especially if they run sloppy. If you run sloppy and run Bloodhound with this idea, then you'd be able to find people no matter what. You'd never lose people. And it could be interesting on indoor maps or small maps because you would see blood pools from like the second floor onto the first floor and you'd know that somebody's down there. And so it'd be pretty good tracking. And then, or if somebody had iron will, you'd be able to see them through through walls pretty much because they're blood pools. Brutal strength. I think brutal strength is fine. If anything, they could buff it like by 5%, but I feel like it's a fine perk. It, it does its job. It's just, there's better perks to run, but I don't think... Beyond, like, buffing it by a few percent, I don't think that there's really any buff that you could give to Brutal Strength that wouldn't make it super, super oppressive for really no reason. And so they could buff it by, like, 5% per tier, but I'm, I'm fine with it being unchanged. And if you don't know what it does, it makes it where you break stuff 20% faster. Corruptor Invention, it blocks the three furthest gens from your spawn for 120 seconds. I think it's fine. Does its job fine. Unchanged. Chlorophobia. Chlorophobia, if you're within the killer's terror radius, you heal 50% slower. I want them to make it to where the healing penalty remains the same, 50% slower. But healing sounds are now increased by 100% at tier 3, making it to where if people are healing your terror radius, not only are they healing slower, but you can find their location a lot easier because they're healing louder. And make it to where you don't have to run Nurse's Calling. Of course, you could, but you don't have to run Nurse's Calling as much, and it's more, a lot more viable of a perk by itself. Because the whole point of Chlorophobia is that people are healing slower, so you can catch up to them and be able to get them. That's why people run Nurse's Calling whenever they run Chlorophobia. But with this, you wouldn't have to, as long as you can rely on your uh, the audio for finding people. Coup de gras. Coup de gras, whenever a gen completes, you get a token, and your lunge distance goes up by 60% whenever you use a token. So you can get up to five tokens in a match because of five gens. I want them to make it to where it's increased by 20% per tier. It was initially at 100% when it was in the PTB, but they nerfed it down to 60. I think that because of how little tokens that you get, and it depends on the survivors actually getting gens done, I think upping it, upping it to 80% would be fine. I think even the 100% was fine, but I want them to buff a little bit, give them more reason to run it, especially because you got to actually like be losing the game in order to actually get your perk to, to work. Cool limits. Whenever a generator completes, all windows and vault locations are blocked within 30 meters of the gen, and they'll be blocked for the next 30 seconds. What I want them to do is I want them to make it to where whenever a gen completes, all windows within 32 meters of the killer, so not, not the gen that completes, but within the killer, it's in 32 meters. They became they become damaged. Have the damage test effect, same as bamboozle, for 30 seconds. And then if survivor vaults a damaged window, then they be, they, get, they get put in the mend status effect. So they become injured and they have to mend. Or if they're already injured, then they have to mend. And this would make it to where just you running around, a gen completes, and then all the vaults are damaged, and the survivor has to make the decision: Oh, do I want to get hurt, or do I want to keep on running and possibly try to risk it for another pallet? And it makes the gameplay a lot more dynamic, make this a lot more interesting of a perk, and be able to press, pressure the survivors a lot more easy because you'd be able to injure them really fast. Or a lot easier, I guess. <laughs> uh, we've got Dark Devotion. Dark Devotion, whenever you hit a hit the survivor that's your obsession with your basic attack, you transfer your terror radius to them, and they get a 32-meter terror radius for 30 seconds. 
And then you also become undetectable since you don't have a terror radius anymore because your obsession has your terror radius. What I want them to do is very simple. I, I want them to make it where the obsession, uh, when you pick up the obsession, when they have Dark Devotion applied to them, the, t the timer will actually pause. Because I've noticed a lot of the time with Dark Devotion, you basically have to slug your obsession because it's only 30 seconds and it takes about 15 seconds to hook. So if you try to hook them, then you're wasting half the timer. So I'd like to make it to where you can down and then pick up and then put them on the hook and then you still have th your, like, probably 25 seconds of your timer left. And then I want them to also make it to where Dark Devotion resets the timer if you hit your obsession again. Because I've had a lot of times where I hit my obsession once and then I've, there's nowhere, nobody nearby. And so I have no reason to break off the chase because by the time I'd be able to get to somebody else, their 30 seconds would be expired. And so I want them to make it to where if I hit my obsession again, the timer resets. Because why would it not reset? Because I hit my obsession again, why wouldn't I get another 30 seconds? It makes the perk a lot more viable, a lot more scary, and it'd be a lot, a lot more interesting. All right, we got Dead Man Switch. Dead Man Switch, I pretty much want them to change uh, quite a bit. So Dead Man Switch, after hooking the obsession, Dead Man Switch activates for the next 45 seconds. Well, activated any survivor that lets go of a generator before it's fully repaired. It gets blocked by the entity. And so pretty much what happens is if somebody is working on a gen, the obsession gets hooked. If the killer goes to where that gen is getting done, or even if they don't go to where it's getting done, if the person lets go of the gen at the, when the, within the 45 seconds after the obsession gets hooked, then the gen gets blocked for the remaining time and they can't work on it. And so what I want them to do, make it a lot more oppressive of a perk, essentially. Uh, upon letting go of a gen afflicted by Dead Man's Switch, so if some if the obsession has been hooked, this, the survivor becomes the obsession. So if you let go of the gen when Dead Man's Switch is up, you become the obsession. And then instead of blocking the generator, the generator now explodes and loses 10% of progress and continues to regress as long as Dead Man's is activated. And so this makes it to where it's more of a perk on constantly getting in chases with people and constantly hooking people and if you're able to win your chases and constantly able to uh hook people then you'll be constantly getting gen pressure and so it's more of a perk that instead of uh and, and the, the reason why i think this perk would be balanced is because if you run into like even like one or two people that are really good at looping you that are really good at keeping the chase on then this perk is going to be active this perk would become more active if you're able to like actually get people that are uh, like catch them out in the wrong places or if you see somebody that is more of the weak link and they, they're your obsession then you can get a lot of pressure that way so I don't think this perk would be OP but it would still be really really strong be able to push people off gens and constantly get pressure it would be really strong on killers that have a lot of uh, looping potential like nurse or blight or killers like that hillbilly we got Deathbound. If you don't know what Deathbound does, if a survivor heals within at least 32 meters away from you, they will scream, revealing their location after they get done healing. And for the next 60 seconds, if the two survivors that are healing, because it has to be one person healing another, the two survivors that were healing for the next 60 seconds, if they go more than 8 meters away, then they won't hear your tear radius for the remaining 60 seconds. And so... I don't want them to change the range condition. I think the 32 meters away from you is fine, but I want them to make it to where it now also applies in slugs. So if somebody heals a slug, they'll scream. If somebody does a self-heal, they'll scream. And the effect now lasts for 30 seconds instead of 60 because it alerts you whenever anybody scream or whenever anybody uh, does like any type of healing action. And so it'll help you pinpoint people a lot easier. Pretty much a, uh, a nurse's... It's, it's kind of like... A, it'd be like a reverse nurse's calling, essentially. Uh, but with like a the terror radius thing because there's calling it's in 32 meters this would be like anything outside of 32 meters and then we got deer stalker i don't think i don't think deer stalker needs a range requirement deer stalker you can see slugs on the floor within at least 36 meters i think that deer stalker you can make it to where you can see slugs across the entire map and it would still be balanced because if you're running deer stalker you're not running a lot of other perks that are pretty good in the game and so i don't think it needs the range restriction but i also want them to make it where slugs also go 25 percent slower when you have deer stalker so it's a little bit easier to track your slugs keep your slugs in the same place and be able to play around that uh discordance uh, anytime a generator within the range of 128 meters is being worked on by two or more survivors it's marked with the yellow aura and then it's highlighted and you get a lot of noise notification after the generator is no longer within the range or is being repaired by one survivor the highlighted or it will linger for four seconds so what I want them to do to this is have an additional effect. When a survivor leaves a gen that's being co-opted and has Discordance active, 
their order is revealed for three seconds. That way you can see people break off at gens early and you can see which directions they're going and you can kind of plan your approach a little bit easier, making the perk a little bit more uh, interesting to use, a little more, more viable to use and give you a lot more map awareness. We got distressing. What I want them to do distressing, I I wondered if they they should actually like add in some gameplay element. I couldn't really think of anything that would fit into distressing that isn't already in some other perks. And so I figured just making it, just enhancing like the blood point gain that you get from it. Because uh, I've always seen distressing more as like it supplements other perks. And so what I want them to do is just make it to where the 100% bonus blood points are applied at the end of the match. Similar to how barbecue and party streamers and stuff like that are applied. Because the 100% bonus, bonus of blood points to deviousness doesn't really matter. Because deviousness is one of the easiest categories to fill up. Especially for a lot of killers like Legion or Wraith. Really any killers that use their power pretty regularly. You're going to max out in your, in your deviousness. Uh, if you don't max out in your deviousness, then you're probably playing the killer wrong because you're not using your power because that's what deviousness is. And so make it to where it applies in post-game chat. People get more blood points and then keep the terror thing just the, just the same. Dragon's Grip. I want them to make it to where Dragon's Grip is uh, pretty much the same, but I want them to change exposed status effect perks to make it to where if you're in chase with the person that is exposed, then they get a red glow around them indicating that they're the one that is, is exposed. Uh, just because I've noticed that a lot of the time, not only with me, but with other people, they don't have as much of an indicator, like who's exposed or like if the exposed timer is still up. And so if the survivor gets a red glow around them when they get in chase and they are also exposed, that'd be more of an indication of like, oh, who to go after. And so that'd make the perk a lot more easier to use, a lot, a lot more communicative, It'd be a lot better. I don't know if communicative is a word. I actually don't know if it's a word. <laughs> we got dying light. Uh, remove the obsession buff to action speed, increase the penalty to 4% per hook at tier 3. So if you don't know what it does, uh, once forever becomes your obsession, every time you hook somebody that's not your obsession, you gain a token. For each token, there's a 3% penalty to repairing, healing, sabotaging, up to a, man ma up to a maximum of 11 tokens at, at 33%. And then your obsession is unaffected by the penalty and get gets a 33% action speed bonus to unhooking and healing. So I want them to remove the action speed bonus for the obsession because... Why would you run a perk that benefits the survivors? That doesn't make any sense at all. And then I want them to also make it to where it's a 1% more debuff to all actions. Make it to where there's more reason to run it. Because a lot of the time with Dying Light, by the time you get enough hooks to where it actually matters, you're already winning the game. And so there's really no reason to run the perk. Because by the time that you get, say, like six tokens, that should be 18%. Uh, that's already six hooks and you're already halfway to winning the game. And so, I don't know. Dying Light is always like a weird perk to use. And so I just like to see them buff the debuff speed a little bit and then remove the uh, positive for the survivors. I think it'll make it a lot better. Enduring. I think Enduring is a fine perk. Does the job pretty well. Fire Up. This is probably one of my favorite rework ideas. So what I want them to do to Fire Up is, if you don't know Fire Up currently, when a gen gets completed, you get a stack. Each stack translates to 4% faster action speed to breaking pallets, breaking break walls, breaking generators, vaulting windows. And I thought it worked on lockers as well. I guess, I guess it doesn't. And it also works with picking up and dropping survivors. So what I want them to do instead, instead of it being dependent on people completing gens, I want them to make it to where every time that you do a breakable action, you get a stack. And so if you break a generator, if you break a breakable wall, if you break a pallet, you get a stack for up to uh, up to 20%. What would that be? Up to 10 stacks. <laughs> Quick math. So what I want them to do is each stack gets you 2% faster action speed to breaking pallets, break walls and generators, vaulting speed, pick up survivors, all that fun business. But uh, for a maximum of 20%, so 10 stacks. And so the idea is, like, the more you play the game, the more pallets you break, the more generators you break, the more stuff you do, the faster you get. Because that is actually more what's progressing in the game. And it's more within your control. And it would make you feel a lot more powerful. And this would be a legitimately powerful perk. Especially if you combined it with Brutal Strength. You'd break pallets in Omega Speed. Or can you imagine, like, Shadow Dance Wraith? And so I think this would make it a lot more viable, a lot more interesting, a lot more deadly. Uh, Force Bennett, I think Force Bennett is fine. It actually has use with some killers. It makes Hag a powerhouse even more so than she already is. And so I feel like it's a fine perk. does its job pretty well. It's just people don't run it just because they don't 
then they, they don't want to try it, I, I assume. It, it is actually a legitimately good perk. In my opinion, at least. All right, we got Franklin's Demise. So Franklin's, if you don't know what it does, uh, if a survivor is hit with a basic attack, they drop their item for 90 seconds. Uh, or they, they drop their item, and then if 90 seconds elapses, then the entity consumes the item. And you can also see the auras of items that are dropped due to Franklin's. And so well, what I want them to do is instead of it, the item being consumed by Franklin's, and now it's a different effect. So the survivor still drops the item all the same, but when they drop the item now, the item actually teleports to the to a basement chest. And so there will be, of course, like the normal basement chest that spawns, and then the other spawn location for the basement, there will be a special type of basement chest that will look different. And the item will get sent there, and the survivor that dropped their item has to go down into that basement and loot that special basement chest and recover their item. And so what this would accomplish is instead of it just being kind of like a BM perk or a bad manners perk, it would still make the survivor just waste time going down to the basement and risking going down to the basement. Because the basement, if you get caught out in there, you can lose a lot of time. Because by the time you get hit and then run out of the basement, the killer is already back on you and you're really nowhere. It's very risky to do that. But it still allows Survivor to recover their items without feeling like the killer is just running Franklin's in order to ruin their game. Because that's how Franklin's is communicated, or at least that's how a lot of people believe, uh, like, the reason why people run it. And so this would make it still strong, still get items out of people's hands, while still being a uh, really strong perk. And then we got Fear of Chase. Fear of Chase, when you, you become obsessed with one Survivor... Whenever you hook the obsession, you get a token, up to four tokens. While in chase, your terror disc gets reduced by four meters uh, for every accumulated token. And so it's only reducing your terror disc when you're in chase, depending on your tokens. And then when your obsession dies, you lose all your tokens. So what I want them to do is each time you hook the obsession, you get a token, like it currently is. But each token translates to eight meters reduced in your terror disc. And uh, this only applies while the obsession is on hook. And so you can get up to four tokens. So you can have a 32 meter uh, terror radius reduction, which is the normal killer terror radius, but only when your obsession is on hook. And so whenever your obsession is on hook, is on hook, you have like about 30 seconds, if if more, uh, if they just leave them on hook, to be able to get to somebody else, stick up on them, and get a free hit. So I think that'd make it a lot more interesting of a perk. And even if you didn't have the full 32 meters, even just having like eight meters reduced helps out quite a bit. Like if you ever played against a Deathlinger or a Hag and they don't don't run modern abuse, then uh, you can tell like how small their terror radius is. And even if they do run modern abuse, if you have two sacks of this, that'd be similar to like a Hag or Deathlinger running uh, modern abuse. And so that's what you can use for reference thinking about this perk. Uh, we got Gearhead. I love Gearhead. I honestly do. I wish Gearhead was a better perk. What I want them to do to Gearhead is make it to where after two basic attacks, Gearhead activates for 30 seconds. And then while active, all gens currently being repaired are shown with a yellow aura. Instead of what it currently does, where when you hit twice, Gearhead activates for 30 seconds. And if somebody does a good skill check, then a gen goes in yellow. If they do a great skill check or if they miss a skill check, then it doesn't go in yellow. Or if they don't get any skill checks at all, it doesn't go yellow. And so because of the RNG nature of this perk, it's pretty bad. And so I just want them to make it to where every two basic attacks, you can see the gens that are being worked on. And I feel like that'd be fine. It'd be really strong, but it wouldn't be too strong in my opinion. Hangman's Trick. Hangman's Trick, if there's uh, anybody within four or within six meters of a hook, whenever you're carrying a survivor, then you see their aura. What I want them to do is any survivor within eight meters of a hook will have the aura revealed. Blanket. If you're within eight meters of a hook, no matter where you are in the match, even if the killer isn't carrying somebody, your aura is revealed. That's what I want them to do. I think that would make it fine, make it a lot more interesting, make it a lot more powerful, especially because hooks are everywhere. And then we got Blood Favor. Blood Favor, if the killer hits you with a basic attack, any pallets within 16 meters are blocked for 15 seconds, then it has a cooldown of 40 seconds. What I want them to do is I want them to reduce the cooldown to 30 seconds because it's a hex perk anyways. It doesn't need as much of a cooldown, but still I understand why they do want a cooldown just because they don't want you blocking every pallet. So reduce it to 30 seconds. And now I also want them to make it where it only lights a totem after the perk has been used at least once. So you can't counter the killer's blood favor before they even get like a single use out of it making it a little bit more viable to run. And, of course, they, it will only light if there's available dole totem, but if you don't get one hit by the time they cleanse all five dole totems, then I, I don't know what to tell you. 
Uh, we got hex crowd control. What I want them to do is the duration is increased to 30 seconds instead of 14. And so if you don't know what it does already, if survivor vaults a window while hex crowd control is up and they're doing a rushed action, then it blocks for 14 seconds as long as the totem is up. So I want them to buff that to 30 seconds, and then windows no longer block. They become damaged instead, like we were talking about earlier, where if they vault, they get pinned in the mid state. And then we got Devour Hope. I feel like Devour Hope is a really strong perk. It's fine as is, unchanged. Hound Grounds, I feel like it's fine as is, unchanged. Lullaby, if you don't know, if you don't know what Lullaby does, uh, anytime you hook a survivor, then you get a token. Each token translates to, uh, I believe, minus 14% notification on skill checks whether they be healing or on generators and so it makes it to where you have less warning on doing skill checks and then if i tokens you get no warning and it also has a six percent regression penalty on failed skill checks to where you get six percent more knocked off than your base regression uh whenever you're healing or repairing a generator or whatever and so what i want them to do instead is the regression penalty is now tied to how many tokens you have and so the penalty is 2% per token up to a maximum of 10. And so if you get three tokens, then you'll have the normal like max for the current one. And then if you get four, you get 8%. And then five, you get 10%. So you'd be 4% more than it is currently if you get max tokens. And then also Lullaby will only light when you have at least one token, when you have a, at least one hook. That way people can't knock out your Lullaby early and your Lullaby will actually have an impact on the match consistently every match because i feel like lullaby is not a great perk as is and it lighting up early before you get any use out of it is pretty dumb especially because like people know you have lullaby as soon as they do a skill check on the gen which makes no sense even before you hook somebody i think that's dumb uh noed this is actually an idea that i got from identity v it's a game very similar to dead by daylight what i want them to do is either like something where the killer has like red eyes but of course that wouldn't work like killers like demogorgon or pyramid head uh, or red trail something to show that the killer has no it activated so you don't get surprised when they actually like hit you because it's always like a guessing game and i suppose that is fun for people but uh like some people like the guessing game of it but i think it'd be cool if it was like translated that the killer had it and be a lot more scary in my opinion but of course i don't want them to change no it as it is i feel like no it is a fine perk it's pretty counterable uh, Hex Retribution is unchanged, does its job pretty well, in my opinion. Ruin. Now, this is probably a controversial change for a lot of killer mains, but I feel like Ruin is too strong. I, I honestly feel like out of all of the regression perks that are, exist in the game, Ruin is the most unearned regression that exists. I just feel like Ruin, if you just exist, then Ruin is going to knock down gens and it's going to make sure that instead of survivors doing five gens in the match, they got to do like 15 gens if you're actually playing well. And I feel like that is just way too much. The game is not designed to do 15 generators worth of progress. And so what I want them to do is knock it down to 100% regression penalty base at tier three instead of 200%. Because let's face it, if you're, if you're playing well, if you're constantly getting people on hook and they're having to get off the gen that they're doing and the gen automatically regresses, you're going to get a lot of value no matter what. It, at least with this, it won't make you where, oh, I left the gen for 30 seconds. My 50% gen is now zero uh, because I feel like that's just dumb. And so it'll make it less uh, oppressive of a perk and it'd be, give you even more reason to run some of these other perks that I've suggested as a uh, potential new gen regression or potential new chase perks. Uh, and then we got third seal. Third seal now, of course, only applies after you get your first stack. Third seal, every time you hit somebody with your basic attack, they become blind until the totem is broken. And so this would only apply third seal to a totem after you get at least one stack. At least if you hit somebody at least once in the match. Uh, Thrill the Hunt, unchanged. I feel like it does its job pretty fine. Undying, unchanged. I feel like it does its job pretty fine. Hoarder. Quarter, if somebody picks up an item or if they loot a chest within 64 meters of you, you get a loud no no noise notification for four seconds. And then it also makes it to where two additional chests spawn in the match. What I want them to do is make it to where the change to the range requirement is 32 meters, 48 meters, and then limited. Because I don't know why it's unlimited knowing when people pick up items or loot chests is very niche scenario anyways so might as well make it to where you know when anything is done like that across the entire map and then i want them to also make it to where it also affects the item rarity do where only items of uncommon rarity and below can be found in chests and so that's yellow and brown items 
because if you're going to make it to where more chests spawn in, then I feel like it should be natural to where you counter the types of items that are actually brought into the match. So you counter keys, counter really strong med kits and toolboxes and stuff like that. And then we got I'm All Years. I want them to reduce the cooldown to 20 seconds. I'm All Years is a pretty fine perk as is. It's actually a pretty good perk, especially for some killers. It's really good on Huntress, really good on Pyramid Head, really good on a lot of different killers. And I feel like reducing the cooldown would make it even better, a lot more viable to run. Infectious Fright, I think they need to add in at least an 8-second cooldown. Infectious Fright is omega strong as is. I feel like they need to put a bit of a skill cap on it. Uh, if you ever run into a uh, a nurse that is having a bad day and they run like the game offering or midwitch and they just go around and slug people for four minutes and always get infectious fright procs they set out at least add in a little bit of a skill cap while still remaining strong eight seconds may not matter in the end but at least it would put a cap to the uh like the super strong potential of it insidious unchanged i think it's fine it's a little bit of a meme perk it's whatever uh, Iron Grasp, I want them to make it to where the current effect is replaced. Upon seeing a survivor, you grip Titans. For each survivor within 8, 10 to 12 meters of your... Wait. Yeah, so for each survivor within 12 meters of uh, of you when you're carrying a survivor, the time to wiggle off is increased by 12%. And so if one person is within your 12 meters while you're carrying, time to wiggle off is 12%. 12% uh, higher, and then at two people, 24%, three people, 36%. Make it to where the more people that are trying to body block, the harder it is for the person to get off. And then Iron Maiden, I want them to make it to where, similar to like I was talking about the Dragon's Grip, where the person is exposed and they're in chase, then they get a red glow around them. But they want to get that red glow if they were hiding, because I don't want them to be uh, revealed if they're hiding, if you know what I mean. Uh, knockout, Unchanged, I feel like it's fine as it is. Lightborn, fine as it is. Mad Grip. I want them to buff this by adding an additional two seconds to the wiggle bar pause because a lot of the time I feel like the the wiggle bar pause is only really good for just eating the hit, but it'd be more interesting if you could actually get a little bit further if people body blocked. And so add an additional two seconds to my grit for the wiggle bar pause. Make your choice. I want them to make it like with all the other exposed perks where if the person is exposed and you're chasing them, then they get a red glow around them. Uh, Mindbreaker, Unchained. Mindbreaker is actually a really good perk and it synergizes really well with other perks. Uh, just people don't realize how good it is, in my opinion. Monitored views. I want them to remove the FOV adjustment, either have it be permanent or not at all. It changing constantly during the match is a little bit disorienting and big reason why a lot of people don't run it. Just add an FOV slider, please. Like, <laughs> like come on. Come on, baby. It's 2021. Like, the fact that we don't have an FOV slider already is crazy. Uh, we got Monster Shrine. Monster Shrine, delete the basement. God, just get rid of it. It's not a final mechanic. I don't like the basement. If you've seen my Twitter in the past few weeks, you, you know I don't like the basement. Uh, I have a lot of opinions about the basement. I'll probably end up making a video about it eventually uh, and like what I would change and like why the basement is actually bad and how the basement actually makes you a worse player. But uh, for now, uh, I just want them to change the basement. How I would change Monster Shrine is actually suggested by uh, one of my viewers named Ruben. Every time you hook a survivor for the first time, you gain a token, up to a maximum of four tokens. For each token, uh, the hooks are granted the following stackable bonuses. So 6%, and obviously this would go up per stack, so 6 times however many stacks you have. 6% faster energy, energy progression uh, per your tokens. 15% increased difficulty on escape attempts. So if you try to escape it's 50 percent harder per token and then nine percent penalty for escape fails and obviously it'd be more than nine percent depending on how many tokens you have make it to where it's applicable to all the hooks in the match and there's more reason to run it because you'd be able to press survivors pressure the survivors more effectively as the match goes on it'd be very insidious of a perk as well if they didn't realize it uh, we got Nemesis. I feel like Nemesis does his job just fine. It's uh, a little bit more of a synergizing perk, which I feel like is fine. Uh, and yeah, I, I feel like it's pretty good. It synergizes, it synergizes with a lot more builds than people would think. And I actually really like it because of that. And so I think it's unchanged. I think it's fine as it is. No way out. I feel like it's fine as it is as well. It's just people don't people don't run it. I've actually had a lot of use out of No Way Out personally. Uh, but I don't know. People just don't like it for some reason. Just I guess just because it's an endgame perk. I don't know. I feel like it does this job. 
oppression. I want them to lower the cooldown to 45 seconds. I feel like 80 seconds for kicking a gen perk is kind of nutty, especially when perks like Pop Goes the Weasel, Pop Goes the Weasel exist, where you can just use it unlimited. Uh, so reduce it to 45 seconds. Overcharge. This is a suggestion by uh, one of my viewers, Esu. If the survivor misses the overcharge skill check, the gen is blocked for 30 seconds. And so if you miss the hard skill check that's on the generator, the gen gets blocked for 30 seconds and you can't work on it. Make it a little bit more effective slowing down the game. Overwhelming presence. For every 10 charges, and this is suggested by Fosny, uh, one of my viewers as well, for every 10 charges burnt on an item, gain 5% haste until the next hit. Stacks up to 3 maximum. And so if people are trying to flashlight save on you or trying to burn you at a, uh, a pallet, then you go 5% faster for every 10 charges that you waste. And obviously, you'd be wasting charges faster. And so you'd be able, getting the, be able to get the stacks much faster. And then Players of Food, Unchanged. I feel like Players of Food is a pretty fun perk. Pretty uh, pretty good perk as well if you have the right build for it. Uh, Pop Goes the Weasel. Like, as fine as is. It's Pop Goes the Weasel is really only as good as the survivors are bad, in my opinion. Uh, Predator. Now, Predator, I want them to change it. Instead of making the scratch marks really tight, because having really tight scratch marks is usually bad for you as killer because it hides it under grass a lot easier. Uh, I want them to make it aware instead of having scratch marks, it replaces the scratch marks with having like a blood red mist that kind of like follows the survivors whenever they're running around. So that way, if people can't really follow the scratch marks as well, they can see like the blood red mist following the survivors. Maybe they can track that a little bit easier. And then we got Rancor. I feel like Rancor is fine. It's kind of like, I call it the Swiss Army Knife for killers just because it does so many things. It exposes people at endgame, allows you to moor them at endgame, also has some pretty good tracking. And so I feel like this perk is fine. Actually, a really good perk, very underrated, in my opinion. We got Remember Me. So Remember Me, whenever you hit your obsession, you get a, a stack, you get a token. And each token translates to 4%, or not 4%, 4 seconds longer on opening X gates for everybody but the obsession. So 16% or 16 seconds uh, maximum if you get all four stacks on the obsession, hitting them four times. So what I want them to do is get rid of the obsession being unaffected by it. I want the obsession to be affected by it as well. And then in addition, the obsession becomes exposed after all the generators are done. And so if the obsession exists in the end game, then you can expose them, you can insta down them, and then everybody is affected by 16 seconds. Because I feel like 16 seconds uh, for a perk that you got to waste perk slot, perk slot for and you got to wait till end game, I feel like that's fine for everybody to be affected by it. Uh, Save so the best for last, I feel like it's a fine perk as is, unchanged. Shadowborn. Please, just God, add in an FOV slider. It needs to be in the game. I don't know why it's not in the game. Just why? <laughs> I, I I, don't know why. They, they need to add it in. But I, what I want them to do is I want them to add in, uh, basically make Shadowborn more of like a supplemental perk for other builds. So make it where the aura reading... Uh, so like if you have an aura reading perk, the Shadowborn enhances that effect and enhances the aura reading by five additional seconds after you would have normally stopped reading. So if you have barbecue, barbecue and chili, uh, you would see the person for five additional seconds after barbecue and chili procs. If your nurse is calling, if they stop healing themselves, then you still see them for five seconds after it would have already stopped. Uh, stuff like that. Or uh, I'm all ears. Pretty much any aura reading, you would see them for five additional seconds after you would have normally stopped seeing them. And then in addition... I wanted it to make to where if a survivor is crouching for more than five seconds, their aura is revealed. So it counters stealth a little bit. Counters stealth play. We got Sloppy Butcher. Sloppy Butcher, I feel like, is a fine perk. It does his job really well. Unchanged. Spies from the Shadows. I don't want it to have a, a range restriction. Spies from the Shadows. Currently, if a crow is activated within 36 meters of the killer, you get a loud, loud noise notifica notification and it has a five-second cooldown. And uh, pretty much the cooldown is just so it doesn't spam you. But... I don't think it needs a range condition, especially because it's just for crows. Make it aware when a survivor activates a crow as well and in a limited range, that their aura is revealed for three seconds. And I think that'd make it a lot better of a perk. No range restriction and then aura reading for three seconds after they activate a crow. We got Spirit Fairy. Spirit Fairy, I feel like it's a fine perk. Unchanged, does the job pretty well, pretty counterable. Starstruck. I feel like its cooldown needs to be increased to 80 seconds. If you've ever played against Starstruck, you know what I mean. This perk is absolutely insane. It's very, very impressive. It's an insane perk, especially on some killers like Hag or, uh, or Nurse. It is absolutely nutty. 
I feel like it needs to have a little bit more of a cooldown just because of how crazy it is and how much it actually impacts the match. Strider, I feel like is fine perk as it is, unchanged. Uh, Surge. Surge, what I want to do is make it apply to special attacks as well. And then when a survivor is down, the three closest generators are applied by Surge. And then it would have a 60 second cooldown, a little bit longer of a cooldown to compensate. Make it to where, uh, just because like the counter to Surge is pretty much just like tapping the gen again. Of course, the 8% is lost, but it's not that much compared to like other gen perks. And uh, this would make it a lot more useful a perk, a lot more strong of a perk, and it'd be a lot better to run. And you could use it on pretty much any killer just because it's work on special attacks as well. Surveillance, I feel like surveillance does its job pretty well. Unchanged. Territorial imperative. When you go when a survivor goes into the basement, if you are at least 32 meters away, their aura is revealed for three seconds. And it has a 20 second cooldown. And so what I want them to do is I don't know why it has a cooldown. I should have wrote that in as well. Uh should not have a cooldown. I guess I'll write that in right now. Remove the cooldown. Okay, so what I want them to do is any generator within 32 meters of a hook survivor regresses at 100% speed. And so it regresses at like 100% regression speed. And so pretty much if you hook somebody like in the middle of a bunch of gens that are getting done, you can push people off and then be able to get the regression and be able to pressure people a lot more effectively. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> Remove the cool. I just realized I completely changed the perk. Okay, so, sorry. Don't don't mind me. Uh, <laughs> the Nut of Mobia, uh, just unchanged. I feel like the perk is fine as is. Through Link Tremors, I think they should reduce the cooldown by 20 seconds. Through Link Tremors actually has a really long cooldown. Not only does it have a 60 second cooldown, but the 60 second cooldown only applies after the 16 seconds of the perk. So it's technically as a 76 second cooldown because the, the 60 seconds only applies after the 16 seconds of the perk activating. And so if I feel like they, I feel like if they reduce it by at least 20 seconds, it'd be fine as is. Tinker, I want them to nerf Tinker, make it where it doesn't apply in the same gen twice. I feel like if you have a Tinker proc at least once, you know that that gen is about to be done. And so you can go over there and pressure it. But I don't think that you should be notified a second time. I feel like it's very handholdy and a little bit too handholdy for DPD. I've had a lot of matches where the killer has like ruin and dying Tinker. And I'm playing on solo queue, and because they have Tinker, every time a gen gets up to 70%, they just constantly push off, and the game lasts for five years because they keep on pushing off. And because I'm in solo queue, like, people struggle doing gens as well. They don't do gens at the same time as me, and it's just, it's terrible. And so I feel like this would still be, make it to where it's strong. It just, it wouldn't be a super handholdy type of perk. Because I've seen people that have, like, really, like, no hours in the game, get carried by this just because of how much it holds their hand uh trail torment i feel like it's fine as is unchanged unnerving presence if a survivor misses a skill check within the killer's terror terror radius they are afflicted by obliviousness for 60 seconds so they don't hear the terror radius for 60 seconds after they miss a skill check if they're within the killer's terror radius and they miss it make it to where if the killer if the survivor misses a skill check then they don't know if the killer is coming up to them and the killer knows that they're there because they miss a skill check obviously notifies the killer Making sure it's a lot more risky if you miss a skill check. Unrelenting, unchanged. I feel like it's fine. It does its job as is. I just didn't know what to really do with this because affecting basic attacks is really like finicky. And there's already coup de gras, which affects basic attacks. I don't know how you would do this with. I mean, they could up the percentages to like fifty percent. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess you could just up it by like fifty percent. I, I guess we'll do, we'll do the change live. Uh, up the cooldown reduction by 20% per tier. There we go. So that'd be 40, uh, 40, 45, and then it'd be 50. There we go. Whispers Unchanged. Whispers is a really good perk, really staple perk. Uh, just like a staple of every build. And I feel like it does its job pretty fine. And then Zanch and Tack is the final perk that we have. Zanshin Tactics. I feel like Zanshin Tactics shouldn't be a teachable perk. Zanshin Tactics should really be a general use perk uh, that people can get as soon as they start playing the game. Instead, I want them to replace Zanshin Tactics with another effect. I want them to make it to where every time that you get a basic attack on the survivor, any survivor within 48 meters is doing a channeling action is revealed to you. And so channeling actions are things like healing, doing totems, doing gens, doing chests, anything like that. Make it to where you can break off and pressure multiple people by breaking off and getting into multiple chases. 
Saints and Chactus, it just needs to be a general use perk. There, there's no reason to have this block behind a paywall when it would benefit new players so, so much. All right, and so that's all the uh, the killer perks and how I would change them, if I would change them at all. If you guys agree or disagree with me, I would love to hear in the comments down below. Of course, if you want to discuss this with me, I may be live on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Trickster Shadow. And I will be coming out with a survivor, survivor version of this where I talk about the survivor perks and how I would change them. So stay tuned for that. And I have some other discussion videos like I was talking about with the, the basement. I want to do a discussion video about the basement and like why I don't like the basement and how I want it to be reworked. And so uh, stay tuned for that. Be sure to like and subscribe, comment down below, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye, everyone. Have a good rest of your day, night, or whatever.